Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery. Anthony here, and uh, this video is for a subscriber that asked me, hey Anthony, what are your settings for your brace height and tiller on your Formula XD with axial limbs? Well, in this video, I am going to tell you what my settings are. Um, we're gonna be pretty quick and straight to the point because uh, yeah, there's not really too much to say about that. I would say it's pretty standard uh, for brace height. Measuring from the throat here of the grip, we get nine inches. Uh, generally, I try to keep it between, you know, above nine inches, so the inside of the string is hitting the nine inch line. And I try not to have it go past like 23 centimeters because, well, from my seeing it here, nine inches is right on the inside of the string, but 23 centimeters is actually further to the back of the string. I try to sit it in between the two. I don't know if other people set theirs more forwards or not, but um, it seems to work pretty good here. Uh, I kind of go by how the the bow shoots and and sounds too to a to a degree, but but not too much. Uh, for me, my Brace height is determined by, well, the recommendations from the, the manufacturer and how I build my strings. Because when I make a string, since this is a string I made myself, I make the string with no twists in it to uh, the brace height that I want. And then I let the string stretch out on the bow and then I add in twists to get it back down to the brace height I want. So most of my strings have like 30 twists in them and that's it because they were already, you know, they were already made to the, to the brace height I want them to be made at. Uh, maybe I might be making it sound over, overly complicated, but uh, that's how it works out for me. So nine inches or, or 23, uh, 23 centimeters uh, seems to be a pretty good range. You know, don't want to be too much lower or higher than either one of those numbers. All right, so for the tiller, my bow square personally has uh, one eighth inch markings on it. Uh, yours might be a little more exact than mine. Kind of, kind of depends. So I leave an eighth of an inch difference between the two. So for the top, I am running seven and two eighths. And that's with the line for sevens and two eighths hitting the inside. So the back side of my string is basically hitting seven and three eighths. That's for the top. And for the bottom is seven and one, two, three, and three eighths. And the back side of the string is hitting seven and four eighths because it's because the front side's on seven and three eighths. Uh, I don't know, that's always been pretty pretty good for me. It doesn't feel like the bow at full draw is pulling too much, you know, up or down. Either way, it seems pretty, pretty balanced. Uh, the response of the bow seems pretty good too. When I release and everything comes together, it feels like the limbs are hitting pretty evenly. Uh, you know, the string's hitting pretty evenly, and it feels, it feels good. Uh, you know, you may want to tweak it here and there, depending on, I guess, your shot, your setup, and things like that. But this is a pretty, I would think, pretty standard, you know, setting for both brace height and tiller. I don't think I'm doing anything really special, and I also don't think I'm doing anything out of, out of the norm either. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm quite standard on, on, these, uh, on these settings. Uh, so other than that, hopefully that uh, answers your, your question. Uh, I don't know if the limb tension settings are really gonna have an effect on either one of those two things. I always leave the bow in the performance mode, which is the furthest out setting on the limb tension uh, blocks. I don't, I don't do the, the middle one or the, uh, the furthest in one, because I just don't like the response of the bow that much. 
Uh, other than that, though, that, that pretty much wraps up this video. So hopefully you enjoyed all this information. Maybe it helps you out, gives you some ideas. Um, you know, all the stuff's adjustable. You can't really go wrong with it unless you, like, really put something out of spec. You know, it's always good to start with whatever Hoyt or your manufacturer, boat manufacturer of choice recommends, and then going from there. Uh, that's probably a pretty good idea. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. If you got any more questions, uh, let me know, and I'll try to make videos... Uh, you know where I can about these things, especially if it's something easy like this. This is this is pretty easy to share with you guys. So uh, thank you, and as always, happy shooting.